And what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick. I'm a diagnostic radiology resident in Minnesota. And on Instagram, I get a lot of DMs from pre-med students asking to go over the differences between MD and DO medical schools, which I figured would be a good topic for a video. So let's jump into things. So in the US, there are two types of medical schools that someone can attend to become a physician. One grants a doctor of medicine degree, an MD, and the other grants a doctor of osteopathic medicine degree. A DO. I happen to be a DO. There are other DOs in my residency program and there are other MDs in my residency program. We're all physicians. We're colleagues. A doctor is a doctor is a doctor. Whether it's MD, DO, MBBS, etc. and so on. Both MD and DO schools are super competitive to get into. So I would consider it a huge accomplishment if you get a single acceptance to either type of school. And so this whole MD versus DO thing, it only matters when you have multiple medical school acceptances from both MD and DO schools because then you really have to decide between the two. The real hurdle is simply getting one acceptance in the first place. So if you're a pre-med student watching this video, I would recommend just to apply broadly both to MD and DO programs and see where you get in first. If it's an MD school, great. If it's a DO school, great again. If you get into one of each, then you actually have to decide and then this conversation kind of matters. With that said, let's get into the finer details. So one difference is that DO students learn OMT or OMM, which stands for Osteopathic Manipulative Treatment or Osteopathic Manipulative Medicine, which if you've never seen it before, it's similar to like physical therapy or a very gentle form of chiropractic. DOs have anywhere from 200 to 800 hours of hands-on experience with OMT. So it's kind of like another tool in the toolbox when we're seeing patients with neck or back pain. That being said, something like 90 to 95% of DOs don't even use OMT in their clinical practice. So I'll leave it up to you to decide if this difference is actually a meaningful difference between an MD and a DO. Now you might read online that DOs are more holistic. Some MDs have actually sought out additional training in OMT. So does that make them more holistic? Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. My opinion is that if your doctor doesn't talk to you about things like diet, sleep, stress management, and mental health, then you should probably find another doctor, whether that's an MD or a DO. I think holistic depends on the doctor and the person and not on the degree. Another minor difference might be that DO school curriculum emphasizes things like anatomy, the musculoskeletal system, orthopedics, and sports medicine, whereas an MD school curriculum might emphasize a little bit more of molecular biology, biochemistry, and pathology. But I feel like this is kind of like splitting hairs because we all use the same study resources, the same textbooks, and study the same materials on our board exams. And speaking of board exams, the board exams that DOs take are complex level one, level two, and level three, whereas DO students take USMLE step one, step two, and step three. But in addition to COMLEX, most DO students actually take USMLE step one and step two because this opens up more doors for them down the line and makes them more competitive when they apply to historically MD residencies such as mine. So although those two extra board exams do add to the stress and the expense of medical school, DOs end up using the same question banks, the same videos, and the same textbooks to learn the same material on their board exams. So at the end of the day, we all kind of have the same medical knowledge. With that said, more DOs end up practicing in rural community settings compared to large urban academic medical centers. More importantly, a large portion of DOs end up practicing primary care specialties like family medicine, internal medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, and psychiatry compared to their MD counterparts who are more likely to subspecialize and go into very competitive fields like dermatology, radiation oncology, or ENT. MD schools do have slightly higher average GPA and MCAT scores compared to DO schools, which makes them more competitive to get into and ultimately more prestigious. More prestige means that an MD student might have less difficulty getting into a highly competitive specialty like plastic surgery or ophthalmology. These hyper-competitive specialties tend to require lots of research publications and generally speaking, DO schools have better funded and more robust research departments compared to DO schools. But it's not like it's impossible to do research at DO schools. I did plenty of research and plenty of DOs still end up matching into competitive specialties. Of course, there are DOs in interventional radiology and neurosurgery, and there's MDs in family medicine and pediatrics, so these are all simply generalizations. Now, I realize that things aren't as black and white as this, but consider this for food for thought. Would you prefer to be treated by a doctor who, in undergrad, had a 3.9 GPA, 99th percentile on the MCAT, but doesn't communicate well and freezes in emergencies? Or would you prefer being cared for by a doctor who did average on the MCAT, had a 3.5 GPA in undergrad, but is an excellent communicator and has very high emotional intelligence. Who would you say is more qualified to study medicine? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below.
I think it's also important to know that DO schools have historically accepted more non-traditional students who tend to be older or tend to be career changers. When I worked as a scribe in the emergency department, I had met an emergency doctor who was a DO who had an entire 15-year career in finance behind him before he decided to go to medical school. So to summarize, yes, there are some very minor differences between MDs and DOs, but at the end of the day, the care that the patient receives is virtually identical. I wish I could say that there's zero bias against DOs, but let's use radiology as an example. So there's about 180 or 190 diagnostic radiology programs, and I would say the top 50 or 60 don't take DOs or have never had a DO come through their program. So it certainly would be easier to get into a very competitive program or into a very competitive specialty as an MD student. And I put easy in quotation marks because you still have to work super hard to get into a competitive specialty or into a competitive residency program no matter which medical school you go to. As a DO diagnostic radiology resident, I feel like it's more important to focus on the similarities rather than the differences. We have the same pre-med requirements, we use the same books and take the same board exams, we have the same length of education, have the same salary and job opportunities, both are recognized internationally, and both can practice any field of medicine. If you've been to the ER, then chances are you've been seen by a DO and didn't even know it. So, there you have it. That's my take on the whole MD versus DO conversation. I hope you find it insightful. If you did, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. As every YouTuber says, don't forget to smash a like and subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And I guess I'll see you on the next video. Peace.